If you've been wondering whether or not we need an editor, what kind of editing service would be best, and where to even go and find an editor, then this video is for you. Hi there, I'm Evie, an award-winning children's author and ghostwriter over on eviejones.com and the creator of Children's Book University. I create videos specifically for children's authors, so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss my weekly videos. In this video, we're going to look at if or why we should even consider an editor for our children's book, when exactly we should schedule our edit, everything we need to know about the hiring process, how to reach out to an editor, and how to set up an agreement once we have found an editor we would like to work with. And to support you even more with this important milestone on our children's book creation journey, I have also put together a list of editors that I am going to share with you as well. So let's jump right in. Editing is a valuable investment in our beautiful children's book because a good editor can turn our story from just okay into amazing. Unfortunately, many aspiring authors believe they don't need an editor. I'm a firm believer that a good editor is important in making our book a success, especially if this is our first children's book and if we are not really used to writing creatively. And that's because poor spelling, grammar, and book structure will reflect badly on our book, which then ultimately often leads to negative reviews and a decrease in sales because of those reviews. With children's books having such a low word count compared to other genres, any misspelling or typo, for example, is much more noticeable. And so no matter how important the message of our story is or how beautiful our illustrations are, if our book has too many arrows slipped through, our readers will notice and voice their opinion in a less favorable review, which will ultimately lower our overall rating. And no matter how many five-star reviews we may have, many people often also look at the lower ratings as well when they are deciding whether or not to buy a book for their little ones. So it's my personal opinion that if our book is more than 600 to 800 words long, we should send it off to a professional editor. Even if our book has fewer words than that, having our script edited can be really beneficial. And having a picture book script edited is fairly inexpensive and brings so much value with it. And when our book is written in rhyme and it's something we haven't really done before, please do have some professional eyes take a look. In my video I made specifically on writing rhyming children's books, I shared that about one third of my one-on-one -on -one feedback sessions for aspiring children's authors is for rhyming stories. And in that video, I shared six of my own tips and tricks that I apply when I'm writing rhyming stories for myself and my ghostwriting clients that really help me improve and tweak each line during my writing process. I went ahead and shared the link to that video below, but again, if it's written in rhyme, it's always beneficial to have a professional look at that. Now, it's true that we could just simply go over the script of our story ourselves, and we could just let our significant other read through it as well. But a third unbiased, independent, and professional person can make our manuscript so much better. If we hire the right editor, you will be amazed by the value they're going to add to your story, truly. Now, when in our book creation process should we schedule our edit? Here, the best time to submit our manuscript to an editor would be wedged between two important milestones. One, we ourselves should feel like our story is ready. We have gone over it many, many times and we feel like it's truly the best it could possibly be. And two, the point in time we would reach out to an illustrator. So the sweet spot for handing our manuscript to an editor is right in between those two points. That way we provide a script that is truly what we want it to be, but would still be able to make changes based on the editor's feedback before reaching out to an illustrator. Handing our manuscript in earlier than that, we might end up feeling the urge to continue tweaking our story while it is already with the editor. And if we are handing our manuscript in later, might interfere with what our illustrator may have already created in the meantime. Now that being said, it's important to remember that editors are busy. Oftentimes they are booked for weeks, if not months in advance. And so the best time to submit our completed manuscript to an editor isn't necessarily the best time to reach out to an editor. So when would be the best time to contact or reach out to a potential editor? 
In order to plan ahead and prevent any delays, we may want to contact the editor a couple of weeks before we think we will have completed our story. That way we'll be able to secure an opening that would best suit us and our timeline. I often book my editor four to six weeks before I feel I will have completed my manuscript. So if we feel that our story isn't quite there yet, we could go ahead and reach out and then schedule our edit a few weeks out. That way we have secured a spot in our editor's calendar while still having enough time to tweak our story. Now here's my first big important ninja tip. Once we have sent our manuscript to the editor, we will want to try really hard not to tinker with the manuscript, at least not until we have the edited version back. I know it's really hard, but tinkering with the manuscript while it's with the editor will just lead us to wanting to make changes, which of course defeats the whole purpose of having a professional editor look over our work, right? So once we have submitted our story to the editor, it's time for us to just take a break from the manuscript until we receive our edits back. Now let's take a look at compensation next. Editors usually charge in one of three ways for their services. One, cost per word. Two, cost per work, where the cost is a flat rate. And three, cost per hour. Many editors like to charge based on the number of words, but because the word count is usually much lower for children's books, especially picture books, editors often charge a flat rate per work when it comes to children's books. Here, just like with illustrators, I have found that the more experienced an editor is, the more they often charge. Now, something many aspiring children's authors don't realize is that there are actually a number of different types of editing. The way the different types of editing are defined and categorized often depends on each editor themselves, but depending on where we live, there are usually three main types of editing. Content editing, copy editing, and proofreading. Each provides a different level of editorial feedback and prices often differ slightly between these three types as well. When it's time for us to reach out to an editor, we need to know what each edit does so we can ask for the correct type of edit. Content editing is also sometimes called substantive, developmental, or structural editing. Here the editor aims to ensure that the structure, the content, and the language and style and the presentation of our book is suitable for our little readers based on what age group our book is meant for. Copy editing, on the other hand, addresses accuracy, clarity, and consistency. It doesn't involve any significant rewriting. Instead, it looks more at things like grammar, punctuation, spelling, capitalization, repeated words, and inconsistencies. And proofreading, the third type of editing, involves making sure that our script is ready to be published. It includes making sure that all elements of the document are included and in the proper order, that a unifying set style has been followed, and that all spelling or punctuation errors have been corrected. Now, since there is usually a small amount of text in children's books for younger kids, we may only need a copy edit rather than a content edit to make sure there are no spelling or punctuation errors. I usually go with a combination of a copy edit and proofreading if my manuscript has more than 800 words. As I already mentioned, each editor names and defines these services a little bit differently. So if an editor's website doesn't clearly define these terms for you and you still have questions, don't be afraid to simply reach out to the editor and they will be more than happy to help you figure it out. Here's my second ninja tip for you. It's again an important one because many aspiring children's authors are not aware of this. An editor isn't a formatter. Oftentimes writers assume that the person editing our book is also going to be the one that determines what should be on which page or what layout should be where and that it is the editor that puts the pages of our book together. But unless our editor is also offering these services, they usually do not format our story. Now, when looking for an editor, what exactly should we look for? There are several things we will want to consider and keep in mind when choosing an editor for our beautiful story. The first aspect to consider is the genre and style. Because children's books differ greatly from books written for adults, we will want to make sure that the prospective editor has experience in editing children's books. And that's because they need to understand that vocabulary is appropriate and suitable for each age group and also what word count would go best with each age group. 
And this holds especially true if we have written our children's books in Rhyme. It's very different from any other style, so, so ideally our editor should then have experience in editing rhyming children's books. Usually an established editor shares a couple of books and also testimonials that showcase some of the books they have previously edited. And so we will want to make sure to look for those in their portfolio on their website. And if you don't see one, don't be afraid to ask because we really do want someone that has worked with children's books before. And if they have edited children's books for an age range that is similar to that of our own book, even better. The second aspect to consider is the number of included rounds of editing. Here I'm mostly talking about the content editing. Usually this type includes two rounds of editing. And that's because this type of editing involves content and structure suggestions and changes. So it's important to be able to share our reworked story with our editor again. The third thing we want to consider is all about recommendations. I personally put a lot of stock into recommended services because this always helps me understand another author's experience and what it is like to work with that particular editor. The fourth aspect to consider is the geographic location of our editor. This is actually such an important aspect to consider that so many don't ever think about. Language and rules pertaining to that language differ from region to region. Here we will want to consider what our main market is we are trying to sell our book in. Where do we believe we will be selling most of our books? For example, writing my books in English, I will need to decide what I would like my main market to be. Is it the American market or perhaps the UK market or the Australian market, for example. And thinking about this is important because based on my choice, my spelling and certain grammar rules may be different. Should I spell mom with an O or a U? Should I spell color with an O or with an OU? And if you have watched my video that was all about the most important dialogue rules, you may remember that those might also differ from country to country. For example, while here in the US, commas and periods are placed inside the quotation marks, other places like the UK do not. They tend to place commas and periods outside of quotation marks. I went ahead and shared the link to that video in the description below in case you haven't watched this one yet. And of course, things like idioms, sayings, and proverbs are often also quite different. Now, that being said, it doesn't mean we can't commission an editor from the UK if we live in the US, for example, or vice versa. It just means it's something we need to consider and talk about beforehand to see what rules the editor is used to and what rules they are going to apply. In fact, most editors I have been working with are located in the UK and also in Australia. So this is a conversation we had before we agreed to work together. And the fifth and final aspect to consider is an editor's rate. We all have a limited budget, right? So we will want to, of course, take rates into consideration. But this shouldn't be our only consideration. We shouldn't select an editor solely based on cost alone. Instead, it's important to look at these five elements as a whole. How much experience do they have? Have they worked on children's books before? How many rounds of edits are included? Will I be able to share my reworked work with my editor? How did I learn about this editor? Who has recommended them to me? Where is my editor located? What grammar rules are they using? And how might they differ from those rules of where we live? And finally, what is my budget? Now, when reaching out to an editor, what are some things we will want to make sure we are including in our email and that we are going to ask about if this information isn't already specified on their website? So let's take a look. One, referrals. If we have learned about an editor through someone else who has previously worked with this editor, it is always helpful to mention that in our email. And that's because that will help create trust right away. Because just like we are often cautious when it comes to working with someone new, so are others, right? So mentioning names is always really helpful. Two, what kind of edit we are looking for, along with a no obligation quote. If we already know what kind of edit we are looking for, we want to mention this. Here we will want to make sure we mention one, the genre of our book, which in our case is children's books, and what specific age group it is for, and two, the word count of our story. This is important because we will want to make sure the editor is actually offering this type of edit we are looking for. And oftentimes, if the editor is providing different types of edits, they might offer package deals for their different editing services that may not be listed on their website. Three, 
the time. We will want to ask about A, the next possible available opening, and B, how long an edit would take. That way, we are better able to plan ahead. Four, the number of read-throughs included, especially if we are looking for a content edit and if this information hasn't already been provided on the editor's website, we want to make sure we are asking about the included number of read-throughs. Five, the payment process. Each editor has their own preferred payment method and payment schedule. So here we are asking to learn a bit more about how the payment is usually set up. And six, a sample edit. If this is our first time working with an editor, we will want to ask for a sample edit to make sure we like their editing style, depth and feedback. For regular books, I usually request a sample edit of a piece I have written of around 800 to 1000 words. It's short enough not to take too much of the editor's time while also providing them with an opportunity to show us how they would go about the editing of our work. Now, since most children's books are much shorter, we will want to adjust that word count accordingly. So the sample edit should definitely be shorter than the actual edit we are planning to hire the editor for. Once we decide to work with an editor, they will usually provide us with a contract or agreement to sign either directly through them or through the freelancer platform they may be using. If they do not have an agreement prepared and usually have their clients provide that contract, I went ahead and shared a link to a site that shows us a sample agreement specifically for editors. Simply select the state you live in and click on make document. We can either use the generated contract on the site directly for a fee, or we can simply use it as a template and create our own based on this template. In the end, it doesn't really matter who provides a contract as long as someone does. When it comes to our work, we are often worried about anything that has to do with our copyright. As I have shared in my separate video I made on whether or not we need to copyright our book, whenever we write a book, we automatically own the copyright. The minute we write something down, we own it. If you would like to learn more about whether or not we need to actually register our copyright, I went ahead and added the link to that video in the description below. But if after setting up an agreement, you are still worried about sharing your work with an editor, consider this. A professional editor would never risk tarnishing their reputation within their field, right? They have worked so very hard to get to where they are, so a professional editor is not going to risk that just to steal someone's script. And that's why it's so important to vet our editors and look at some of their former clients' testimonials and their rating, if the freelancer platform they are using provides one. Now, once we have decided to work with an editor, it helps to provide them with two or three short bullet points on what we think they should know about our book and the audience we wrote our story for. The shorter and more concise we present this information, the better. We may have already mentioned some of these in the initial email, but editors often work with more than just one author at a time, so I always find it helpful to have this type of information in one single place. So here we could share one, again, the age group our book is written for, our target audience, right? That's important because as I shared in my separate video on finding the perfect age group for our children's books, the age will influence so many aspects of our story. I went ahead and added the link to that video in the description below, just in case. And so our editor will need to know the target age group. Two, if we are using any specific lingo that is relevant to our story and that our editor may not know about, then that's something we would want to share with them as well. Three, if we would like our little readers to have a specific takeaway from our story, something very specific we are trying to bring across with our book, then that would be worth mentioning here as well. And that's because that way the editor can see whether or not we have accomplished this goal and then can offer suggestions based on that. Four, if we are trying to write a certain way using a specific style, for example, then that would be worth mentioning here as well. For example, is the tone meant to be encouraging and supportive or more nonchalant, more fun and silly, or just sweet and kind? Oftentimes, this is already indirectly implied with the age range we are sharing with the editor. But if we feel this would benefit and help the editor, then we would want to share this information here as well. 
and five if we already have an idea how we would like to arrange our illustrations we can share space holders for our illustrations throughout our manuscript as well that way the editor will know what scenes are going to be supported visually but that's really just a bonus and absolutely not a must now remember when sharing this information with your editor we will want to make sure to keep it as short and concise as possible my third ninja tip here is this. When submitting our manuscript, it's always a great idea to not only submit our story itself, but all our written parts of our book. This may include our about the author paragraph, our blurb or book description, and any other text you might want to include in your book, like a review request. If you need any help with the writing of your author bio or your book description or what to include on a review request page, I will go ahead and add the links to my separate videos for those in the description below. By submitting these written parts as well, we are truly making the most of the collaboration with our editor. Now, what happens once the editor is done? Most editors will provide us with two versions of our edited script. Version one would be our completed edits with tracked changes and comments in the margins. And version two would be a clean edit version. Here the track changes have been hidden. So all we see is what it would look like if we accepted all our editors changes. And the reason most editors include this clean edit version is because it can be easier to read than the version where we still see all the track changes. Now this was quite a lot. And now you might be worried that it might still take you forever to find the right editor for your beautiful children's book. So while there are hundreds, if not thousands of editors on freelancer platforms like Fiverr, Freelancer, Reedsy and Upwork, I wanted to put together a resource for you that provides you with a number of editors that have lots of experience with the editing of children's books specifically. Most of them offer the different types of editing services I mentioned earlier. And this list also contains a number of children's book editors that are well versed in editing rhyming stories. And I'm so excited to share this list with you. I've added the link to that list in the description below. This was a rather long video. But taking the step seriously is important. We work so very hard for our book, so we will want to make sure we give the text the attention it deserves so our story can be loved, enjoyed, and read over and over again. I so hope this video helped make this working with an editor a lot easier and a lot less nerve-wracking. Please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't yet. It really encourages me to keep making free videos for you just like this one. Here's to finding the perfect editor for your beautiful children's book. Bye.